Hello everyone, I'm Lauren and welcome to another video from the Tiny Menagerie. Today we are taking a look at all things Amano Shrimp. Amano Shrimps, also known as the Algae Eating Shrimp, is a small to medium sized shrimp growing to roughly 2 inches in length. And while they're mostly clear or grey in colour, they do display some colour variation between them. It's not much, but you can see that this one is slightly red, while this one is slightly green. And they are both on exactly the same diet. But variation is only very mild, and it's really not something that Amano are known for. Rather than their looks, Amano are mainly kept for their impressive algae devouring capability, and they really do eat algae and tank debris pretty much non-stop. You'll always see them hopping from plants to driftwood to rocks, scouring away at them with their little pad-like feet, and removing anything that's trying to grow there, including the algae. And it's because of this that they've become one of the most popular variety of shrimp kept by aquarists. But what are they really like to have in your tank, and what kind of setup do they actually need? Well, the first thing to point out is that despite what shrimp sellers might tell you, Amano are lazy, like everything else, and if there is nice, soft biofilm or some rotting vegetation in there, then they're going to eat that rather than going for the tougher embedded algae that you might have. And so if you're looking to keep Amano as part of an algae cleanup crew, for example, then you really need to get them in your tank before the algae becomes a major problem, not afterwards. And also, don't expect them to fix a tank that's got an algae problem. You really need to get your growth under control, look at where the nutrients are coming from, maybe look at increasing the number of plants that you have, decreasing the amount of light you have, however it is you want to tackle it. You need to look at getting that algae under control and then getting some Amano to help keep the tank clean. But also, don't be fooled into thinking they can survive on algae alone. Amano are actually omnivorous invertebrates, and as they scour around your tank, they're going to pick up any leftover bits of fish food, any bits of debris. You may even spot them feeding on any fish that may have died in there. And so it's a good idea to provide your Amano with a nice, balanced diet. And mine are particularly fond of these little tiny Tetra brand Cruster menu pellets. And I really like them because they help to reduce dominance between individuals fighting over food. Now don't get me wrong, for the most part Amano are very peaceful little shrimp spending their day happily scavenging around, but when feeding time comes that kind of goes out the window, and it is very much a case of the biggest shrimp gets the food. I find with these little pellets, because each one takes a couple of minutes for the shrimp to eat, the biggest ones will come along, grab a bit, swim away, go and hide somewhere while they eat it, and that leaves plenty of time for the smaller ones to find some too. This way, everyone gets a feed and nobody is left out. Now you might be thinking this would be easily solved if you just kept one Amano in your tank, that way they've got no one to be dominant over. But they are kind of sociable, they're not super sociable, it's not like this school or anything, but they are more confident when they've got other shrimp around them. When they're alone they tend to hide quite a lot, and I find they only come out really when the lights are off. And so ideally you want to look at keeping them in a group of three or more, in a tank that is at least 30 litres and preferably with a slightly soft pH. And also preferably an even balance of males to females, if at all possible. Although this isn't exactly easy, considering shrimps look pretty much exactly the same when they're young. And now you might be hoping that, considering you've just got yourself a nice even mix of males and females, that maybe you're going to be hearing the pitter-patter of tiny Amano feet around your tank soon. And you would be very disappointed if you do. They are incredibly difficult to breed, owing to the fact that they need brackish or salty water when they're in their larval forms. And to make this extra challenging, the adults won't survive in salty water for more than a few minutes. So it's quite common to see a buried female wandering around your tank, but those eggs aren't going to survive more than a few hours after she releases them, unless you can get them into a suitable brackish tank, and then you can gradually increase the salinity in it. But what this ultimately means is that the shrimp that you buy in the shop is highly likely to have been caught in the wild, because they're so hard to breed. They occupy rivers and streams around China and Japan, and luckily for us, despite such a long journey, Amano are highly adaptable and hardy shrimp. And once they've settled into your tank, they will usually live a long life of around three to five years. They actually tend to live slightly longer if you keep them at a slightly lower temperature, although they will happily live in anything between 17 and 25 degrees. While I say that they are a hardy shrimp, I wouldn't add them into a freshly cycled tank. 
They're still sensitive to ammonia and nitrate, just the same as all other invertebrates, so I'd leave your tank to cycle for at least six weeks, just to give that bacteria time to grow and adjust, and time for the biofilm to come along as well, otherwise your shrimp aren't going to have anything to eat, and that's not going to end very well. You'll also want to provide them with plenty of nice dark hiding places in the form of dense foliage or driftwood. They also quite like man-made or natural caves. And this is because while Amano do grow to quite an impressive size for a shrimp, and they can be a bit of a bully when dinner time comes around, they are still very, very small and a bit fragile really, especially when they're molting. Molting is the process by which the shrimp sheds their outer layers of shell in order to grow. If you imagine they've got quite a tough outer coating that isn't going to shift anywhere, what they do is they shed this off and then while that hardens their body quickly expands and so they literally grow a bit while it gets tough again. And as you can imagine as well, during this time they are much more vulnerable without their tough outer shell and so they tend to want to hide themselves away for at least a few hours after they've molted. If you find a molt in your tank, you can just leave it where it is. It won't pollute the water as it breaks down and any shrimp in need of extra nutrients will want to eat it. And while your Amano shrimp are nice and young, you'll find they molt roughly once every couple of weeks, whereas as they're getting more into adulthood, they're molting more like once every couple of months. Overall though, Amano are really easy to keep, surprisingly hardy for an invertebrate, and they're a great addition to a mature, established tank, and especially if you're new to keeping shrimps, they're not as sensitive as some of the more colourful varieties. They are renowned for their impressive algae ability, but just remember that it's still a shrimp, not a miracle worker. It's not going to fix a completely blackened out tank. I also hope you've enjoyed this little video, and if you did, then a like would be much appreciated. Happy fish keeping everyone, and I will see you next time! <laughs>